Welcome to the Loud Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian, right out of Oklahoma City. I got my co-host and weird wolf, Ava Gore, with me tonight. And then we have Steven from the band In the Trench. What is going on, dude? How's it going, man? I, I, first, I want to say that's an awesome intro. <laughs> <laughs> some, some people don't like it, I think, but most people do. No one ever says that to our face, though. <laughs> yeah. I, I was all in. I was like, yeah, I'm in. I'm totally in. <laughs> <laughs> so the band is from, you said Austin, right? Yeah, Austin, Texas, colloquially, man. Uh, we put our time in and around Central Texas, but uh, we, we've, we've settled on Austin for sure. That's where I am. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. You live there, too. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got two Texans with me tonight, so that's kind of cool. There's, there's so many fantastic bands from, like, the Austin area. Isn't that, like, a thing in Austin also? Like, it's known for its music? Yep. Oh, yeah. Live music capital. Is it the, it's a live music is of, the least, United, of the world or the United be. States? <laughs> I would say Definitely. the U.S. <laughs> What's, like, the main genre in Austin? Oh, God. There isn't one. <laughs> like, if you're, walking, if you're walking down, like, is there, like, a... Like a, like a like downtown, isn't there like an H Street or like a Dirty Sixth? Third and oh, th- third and sixth? Dirty Sixth. Thirty Sixth Street. Dirty. 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 It's nasty. Dirty with a D. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dirty with a D. Okay. Is that like all the is there like a bunch of bars, like back to back bars on that on that strip? So let's oh, say yeah. you're walking down the strip on a Friday, Saturday night, right? And there's mm-hmm. gonna be live music everywhere you go. Like what's like the main genre you're gonna hear? Is this gonna differ from bar to bar? I mean, like, one place will have, like, country music, and then, like, you go, like, two places down, I have, like, heavy metal. You know, like, it's not really, it doesn't. <laughs> it's a pretty eclectic mix on 6th Street, yeah. for sure. Uh, you know, and it is, at least at one point in time, it was a live capital, uh, you know, live music capital of the world. Tennessee, you know, um, the Nashville is kind of competing for that now. But, That's what I was thinking, yeah. But, you know, as far as the heavy metal scene, like, we've got a pretty kick-ass heavy metal scene here. Um, you know, it's been really revived over the past 10 years. Uh, it's, you know, been, it's legendary amongst areas, you know, as, as far as Texas is concerned. Uh, but yeah, it's, I love it. Love being here for sure. And, hey, and while we're talking about Austin, we got to give a shout out also to the guys in school for the deaf. Those guys are awesome. I know, I know Steven, you know who those guys are. I love, yeah. I love that. I love that band. Dude, what's crazy is this time, was it last year in October? When was, when did Ice Storm hit? Cause the Ice Storm hit Austin. Oh, that oh, was yeah. in like. February. It was like January, February. Yeah. Yeah. That is nuts that it went that far down. (laughs) Yeah. It was. I actually think it started getting into South Texas. Like, um, I mean, pretty far south of here. It was, it was pretty wicked ice storm for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The electrical grid in uh, Texas is. (laughs) In Oklahoma, we're kind of used to that stuff, I think. So, like, wasn't so bad. But, like, all the Texans were, like, running around, like, chickens with their heads cut off i think i like, know i knew what to do because power's out and then you know te- the texans just aren't used to it anyways okay back to in the trench uh we guys should, you guys should have been hiding during the ice storm should have stayed in the trench <laughs> bad, bad, bad joke. okay so the band started originally back in 2009 we released our first record in 2009 uh okay. we had we had been around uh in you know maybe a year or two before that writing that record uh, so we went uh, recorded that with Eric Delagard uh, up in Real Time Audio. Um, then around 2012, we released our second record, um, which we. So just three years after your first record, you came with the second. Now were these full length albums that came out? Yeah, they they were. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to find a little bit of regional success right out of the gate. 
um, on our first record, which kind of gave us a lot of momentum for our second record, um, which we carried for a little while. And then the band from, well, go ahead, Ava. Are you guys independent or um, do you have a label? Uh, We are, we are independent. Um, Yeah, yeah, we've we've had our opportunities or we've, We've been turned down a couple times. (laughs) 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 So 2009, three years later, 2012, and then you guys went on a uh, pretty much like a nine-year hiatus. Is that that right, or were you guys still doing stuff before you decided to? We we were doing some stuff. Uh, So we, um, coming off of probably 2012 into, you know, in, in that period of 2012 to 2017, we supported that second record pretty hard. Um, p- shared the stage with a lot of national acts, everyone from like Mudvayne to Whitechapel. Um, and we, uh, so we supported that record for a little while. And then um, I got into a PhD, I got a PhD opportunity uh, here at Texas State. And so, you know, it was pretty obvious that I was kind of h- holding the guys back a little bit. And so I decided to take a, you know, take a step back and, you know, get off the train and let these guys keep going. And then, uh, you know, we kind of just milled about. There was really no activity from us for a while, but we, we had been writing a bunch of music for another opportunity that we had at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we met up together, you know, we had no intentions on on doing anything, any like of any kind of seriousness. But we ended up listening to these songs, and it was like, you know, it's a damn shame if we didn't repeat, you know, if we didn't finish this, right? So we ended up... Uh, it started out we were just going to record it ourselves diy just for ourselves just for fun mm. to finish it just and then, one, yeah. and then one thing led to another and next thing you know we're in orb studios which is you know world class top notch studio here in austin texas uh that massive like massive pop and hip hop names have come have come to that studio and it's not really known for heavy metal but we uh we really liked the vibe there ended up going there uh we kind of chunked up a hail mary it, so on the heels of COVID, there was this really odd series of events uh, where we were going to go to another uh, studio that is like, you know, legendary studio. Um, ended up getting double booked, uh, and then COVID happened. It kind of threw schedules all out of whack. And uh, long story short, we ended up at Orb Studios. We wanted to do it right for ourselves again. Just and then, you know, Matt Nevesky from Blue October, he actually produced. Uh, these tunes nice and he he was just like uh you guys should probably shoot a music video and you should probably like take this seriously <laughs> yeah, because, 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 if you guys sound, because if you guys sound good you guys sound good okay so when you left in like a little after 2012 to focus on your phd and your education did you think that years later you because you still got music inside you right do you think that you go back to writing music with the same group of guys or was it kind of like something that you just, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, you know, to be honest, I, I didn't. I, I didn't think about, you know, going, you know, we're always buds. We're, we're, we're best friends. We're brothers. You know, we've been a, like, we were always in contact and always having fun and joking around and stuff like that. But me personally, I didn't really have any intention on coming back to play music at all. Uh, you know, but you touched on it. Like, you've got it inside. You got to mm. let it out. And so when I initially contacted these guys to, to come back to just, cause I got I, like, we all were bored. It's like, dude, we're bored. We're miserable. We, can we just meet up and like, I'll just play bass. I won't even sing. I just want to just jam a little bit. And, uh, you know, and then, and then the songs got brought out. It's like, okay, all right. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. Uh, when you start, you start I, feeling excited, right? Yeah. for sure, 100%. I can't relate to that. I avoided music for a really <laughs> long time. And there's only so long that you can do that. Like if it's really something that you love so much. And like, I think I lasted maybe five years and then like, I just had to do it again. (laughs) No, but I just wanted also to say that the whole PhD thing is awesome because you never really hear that in the music industry ever. So good on you. Thank you. you 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 don't, you really don't hear that. And I don't know how many bands we've interviewed that are actually that have uh, done certain things, but it's super it's not very common to find somebody who's not just has a college degree, but is moving on with a degree and turning it into something bigger for the future. Cause hey, if the music thing doesn't work out, you always got your PhD to fall back on. Right. 
So, so it's a win-win situation for you, no matter what happens. I wish I was that smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, man. Thank you. I don't know if I'm all that smart, man, but uh, but I took a shot, and uh, you know, I'll be the first to admit it. It's like, yeah, sometimes I make some decisions. It's like, yeah, you're you're doing what? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I don't know if you're that smart. <laughs> <laughs> I told him earlier we were gonna go live, so be careful what you say. He's like, yeah, I, I, I need to. I and you know, I used to be careful. I still kind of do, but all the time, I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. Well, I shouldn't have said it too late. You don't have a filter. <laughs> I know that's my problem, though. I need a filter. I think. I think I need a filter. I need like someone in my ear telling me what to say next. So, so this way it's not just in my head. I have oh, too you- much of a filter. <laughs> Dude, you and me both, brother. Like sometimes yeah. I let things go, and I'm just like, ah, I wish I could have that one back. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Does the band sound the same from like from when you left the band and went on the hiatus? Um, because you probably had a bunch of songs, so I'm, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. When you started jamming again, you started, hey, let's play this song from from back then and, and maybe finish some other ones. Uh, but does the music sound different now than it did then? 100%. Uh, I think, you know, with the first two records, uh, our first record was really thrash heavy. Um, you know, more on the, you know, thrash hardcore kind of uh, groove metal kind of kind of stuff. And then... Uh, you know, our second record, we started getting outside of that a little bit, started getting a, a, a little bit more of, um, I don't want to say math metal, but, you know, we tried to pay attention to abstract approaches to writing a new metal style um, of music. Um, you know, I think that was really influenced by a lot of the bands that we had played with um, around the scene. And then this record, uh, this record is completely different than all of them. Uh, we start, I think we, to be, I mean, you hear it a lot and it kind of sounds tired when you hear bands say it, but in our case, 100%, this is the best music we've ever written. It's the most polished music that we've ever written, um, singing better than I ever sang in my life. Um, so, you know, I, I'd have to say it's it's definitely in the trench 2.0, 100%. Well, and you know, and to be, to be fair, every band, a lot of bands, most bands would probably think this is their best, you know, album, but... You know, they're probably right, though, because as musicians, the more we practice, just like any sport we do or anything we want to accomplish, we get better and better as we go along. So you're only going to write better music and you're going to be more excited about the newer songs that you have because they're they're still new to you, you know, so you're going to be more excited about it. Right. You can actually catch our second record on Pandora. Uh, we do have it. It's called Product of the Struggle. Uh, nice. So, you know, I, I, I completely uh, I'd like people to go check it out. Give us some comments. Give us some feedback. Let us know what you think. Uh, you no know, thumbs downies. <laughs> we'll, take we'll take those too, man. Like, we'll <laughs> what were you going to say, Ava? I knew you had something going to come out of your mouth there. Yes. Um, I was going to ask, um, what would you say makes you guys more unique than other bands? Oh, man, that's a good question. Mm, uh, it's, it's something that we've actually dealt with our entire career. Um we we actually are very good at being chameleons, all right. We we can take a little bit of this, take a little bit of that, uh, and and incorporate it into something that is uniquely in the trench. For instance, uh, we can take things like you know riffs that you know fans of Slayer would dig, you know, from our first record. But we'll you know we'll throw in some harmonies and some you know some singing parts that you know might bridge over to a crowd that's more in tune with like a trapped. Or, you know, um, maybe that's not, the, maybe I shouldn't say that one, but or like, a, you know, um, like a trust company or, um, you know, bands in that vein. And so we truly can play on any bill. Um, as is shown by our record, we played shows with Whitechapel. We played shows with Norma Jean, but we've also played with like Mudvayne in, in this moment. And so oh, that's cool. Yeah. So we're super versatile, man. But we've all, at the same time, you know, we played with Chimera when they were still a band. And we co-headlined with him and we did just as well. Uh, so, you know, those are very different, very different crowds to play to. And, you know, if anybody who's ever played heavy metal knows it's like the crowd will let you know if you suck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we, we've never been booed off stage. Right. Like, so <laughs> that, I would say that that's our strong point And that's what makes us kind of unique. Uh, we, we actively try not to get blended in with the sound like, it's real easy to get caught up in a local scene when you go and see, you know, badass bands like Fire from the Gods or, you know, Sons of Texas, you know, Shattered Sun, bands that we've come up with over the years and be like, damn, they're doing something right. What can we do to, like, get mm-hmm. on some of that? 
but I think our strongest point has always been like, they're doing great. They sound awesome. We're going to continue doing our thing. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. And then the new song you just came out with, you have a lyric video for this, uh, for this particular song haunted. Haunted. Yep. You do have (laughs) other music. You actually have music videos though for a couple of your other songs. Uh, but this is your newest release. I went and I watched, uh, the lyric video. I decided to play this one. One, because it's your newest song. And even though it's a lyric video, it's still a really cool lyric video. And yeah. so I was like, let's fucking jam this one. So I like him strangling himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I said. It's the same thing. I like the strangle thing. Yeah, it's we're sick in the head, deep. man. I get that, that imagery for me, like, if I'm not to take up too much time, but, like, it's really symbolic of, my, like, myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's relatable mirror. as fuck. Well. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take our haunted right now, and then we're going to talk a little bit about this song. And when I play a song, we're going to disappear from the stage and let the, the video play. Here we go. Hold on one second. I got I got to pause that for one second just because I got to say that guitar solo <laughs> is bad ass, man. <laughs> it is bad ass. All right, back to the song. Thank you.
There we go. Okay, that is super cool, man. That song is dope. The they uh the the guitar solo, the 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 guitar whoever played the guitar is sick, right? Like that's that is dope. And then I love uh when you say we are all fucking mad here. Like that like kind of gave me some goosebumps. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm pissed off right now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, man. Oh, hold on, Ava's muted. Hold on one second. Unmute yourself. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's that's my bad. Um, I was going to say, that's the R-rated Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> there we go, man. <laughs> that's that's so, straight up where that line came. Like, awesome. The inspiration for that was the Mad Hatter, man. <laughs> nice. Was it really? No, no, it was the cat. Was it the cat or the Mad Hatter? But it was Alice in Wonderland, 100%. Like, that, <laughs> that's what inspired that that line. Yeah. Like, we are all mad here. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And that really, that really struck a chord with me, too, so. <laughs> so why did why did the band fall apart when you left the band back in uh, 2012 or so? Man, that's a good question. Uh, it was about, I think, actually, it was maybe 2015, 2016 when I stepped away uh, for good because that's when I, you know, that's when I start, started the PhD program. Um, okay. You know, I, I think maybe I don't want to speak for the guys, uh, but just maybe a lack of momentum, uh, maybe a, a lack of motivation maybe uh, you know we we had a chemistry for sure when we when we, we were playing and it's like one of those things man when when you have when you have something special that ends it's really hard to kind of put someone else in that spot and keep going but I, I don't know why they didn't man I, I can only speculate yeah uh, but they yeah. just lost motivation I guess you know once once someone leaves especially uh like the head the the lead face I guess of the band it's it's not always I guess it's easy to lose your drive, and that's it's almost like you got to restart building, building back up. Um, it's almost like starting from scratch. It can be like starting from scratch sometimes, I guess, right? Yeah, one hundred percent, it is. Uh, you know, over the years, we've we've had you know, generally every every band goes through this, right? Uh, you have member changes, like yeah, most often it's like the bass player, or the <laughs> you know, random guitar player, or drummer here or there. Uh, but it, it is kind of like starting over. But but for us. You know, uh, I I don't know, man. I, I guess it was a chemistry thing at the end of the day. Uh, but when we got together and we met up, like it was it was like starting over, but that that in, that chemistry was just instant. You know, so who's the first who's the first person you reached out to, or did someone reach out to you to get kind of the going to start jamming again? Like, did you reach out to like the guitar player or the drummer, or how did that go? Yeah, actually, uh, it was kind of a we 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 kind of had a group chat for several different things. You know, these days you, you got your little groups, you know, homies and yeah, stuff, yeah, 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 yeah. right? And so it was just kind of uh, one of those group chats where we just bullshit and threw jokes at each other and you know memes and things like that. <laughs> and then uh, I, I want to say it was myself and John simultaneously, John the drummer, uh, that you know got in contact with uh, Jared. Who Jared Cook? Big shout out to Jared Cook. He's the one that threw down that solo. <laughs> On, on the on the track there, man. Jared does all the solos. Much respect. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, so we we were just kind of milling about, all three of us, and you know. So I guess you have to say it was myself and John that kind of reached out to to Jared a little bit. I wanted to ask what the writing process is like, and if you usually write the lyrics. If so, the song "Haunted" uh, was the inspiration. Just Alice in Wonderland, or did it come from somewhere else? Also. No, I definitely came from somewhere else. Uh, so uh, to answer your first question, uh, yeah, I, I write probably 80, 70, 80% of the lyrics. Uh, you know, about, I love collaborating with my dudes, and so I'll bring some ideas in. Uh, usually, so Jared and Mikey are the riff factories. They'll come up with some riffs. They'll, you know, build some kind of like skeleton structure, and then they'll, they'll kick it over to me, and I'll start off with general patterns and approaches, and then like usually the lyrics are kind of last. Uh, so that's kind of our process about going about things. But for this particular song, it was really inspired by like, you know, looking in the mirror and dealing with like the emotions, the everyday emotions that could be triggered by inner demons, um, you know, uh, sitting in traffic. You know what I mean? And, like some asshole fucking cuts you off and it's like you have that split second. It's, decision. Awesome. it's like it's like <laughs> do I fucking flip him off and go rage on him or do I like take a breath and just chill out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so that this song is completely about 
uh, dealing with those inner demons and dealing with those inner emotions such as rage and hatred. Uh, and then like, you know, deal, you know, we all have struggles in life. Uh, and, you know, I have definitely had to learn how to manage uh, things like, you know, anger, uh, you know, depression and things like that. And so um, those demons never go away. You just kind of silence them for a little while. You learn how to deal with them a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so for, for me, it was all about how you go about dealing. Like, when do those demons show themselves and how do you deal with it? And so the chorus is come, that's where the chorus comes in. It's like, you know, just breathe, you know, focus on the end, um, you know. That, so that's kind of where that came in. I, I think it's so cool. People can take uh, feelings and emotion that's in their head and put it out like on, on paper and put it into a song and put their heart out there. It's not everyone knows how to do that. I certainly don't. I wish I did, but kudos to anyone who could do that. Does any of your coworkers at work ever like hear your music? They're like, man, don't fuck with that dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, they do, man. Uh, like I've, we've got, you know, my major advisor knows about what I do. And, uh, you know, there's several professors here on campus that, that, you know, are familiar with what I do. Uh, and they're, they've been super supportive. Uh, you know, uh, you know, and when they find out, it's like, you do, is that you screaming? Like, is that you making those sounds? Is that, you? yeah, that's me. And, you know, they, They've, uh, they, <laughs> one of my colleagues has, you know, referred to it as, you know, Dr. Harding and Mr. Hyde, you know, kind of thing. Like, even, I'm not quite a doctor yet, but it's kind of a joke that he throws at me. Like I've, all, sorry. Sorry. No, I've no, always wanted to become a doctor just because my last name is Gore, and I think that would be really funny. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome stage name. <laughs> It used to be my Xbox uh, gamer tag. <laughs> Dr. Gorway? Yes. So, sick. Does in the trench, do you guys have a website? I know you guys have like a link tree or some other. I know you guys got a Spotify account and all that stuff. But do you guys have a website, merchandise, all those kinds of good things? Uh, Yeah. As far as our merchandise, you can find all, well, you can find all our links uh, on Instagram, Facebook. So uh, Instagram is at in the trench official as well as face, Facebook um, in, the, in the trench official. Uh, you can find links to our our merch store, our big cartel merch store. Uh, and I, I, if you don't mind, I'd like to say a little something on that. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so, like, we don't have the the resources to be able to print massive a massive amount of merchandise and, and you know mail it out ourselves and like have take the time to have to do that. Mm-hmm. So we go through a third party uh, like big cartel and, and you know, partner with them and uh, and uh, so you if you see the price, it's like that's not us trying to like gouge you we literally we make like four bucks off of yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know so i totally relate uh, <laughs> yeah I did, I, yeah i'm the same way yeah so if you, you know i appreciate everybody go take a look at what we got uh but just like be easy on us we're not trying to we're not trying to scalp y'all man we're just trying to make a buck <laughs> <laughs> do you guys have any shows coming up at all i totally forgot to even ask that no we don't man uh right Nothing now scheduled yet you know, we, we've had our opportunities thrown our way. Um, we recently had a conversation with a pretty, pretty big uh, opportunity that would take us to the national level. Uh, we at this time are trying to focus on, you know, solidifying our regional presence as far as online. Mm-hmm. We really want to establish a good, solid footprint. That way, when we do get out there, we, we can make a real big splash. How do you feel, and this, I guess, maybe a little more personal, but how do you feel about, let's say, because you are working, you're still working towards a PhD, right? Like, you're still, so so how would you feel if, and school's back in session, right? You're on campus, um, you're working at the same time. Would it be super difficult for you right now to go on tour, or are you going to kind of put that off till after you graduate and then kind of see where that, where, where you can go? Yeah, so uh, right now it'd be, it'd be a nightmare to try to go on tour, to be right. honest with you. Um, I'm right in the middle of writing my dissertation and trying to finish up. Uh, I have a few months left. And awesome. so uh, definitely after I finish my dissertation, touring in 2022 is a real deal of possibility. Uh, matter of fact, that's our goal. Uh, our goal is to be able to get out on major tours in 2022. You guys, you better not leave the band again. You guys have really do sound super good. Like, stay with the band. And see where it goes, because the songs are the songs are good, dude. Hey, thank you, man. I really appreciate it, dude. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Awesome that you're in Austin, too. Yeah, yeah and yeah. you're in Austin. Right? Yeah, well, I'm not there, but she's we there. We should link up, man. We'll yeah. have, we'll have a beer or something, for that'd sure. Be, yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> so, um, anything else that you want to say um, that we didn't just based on? Because I know you were thinking about what you are going to say on the show. Is there something like, oh, I should mention this, uh, that maybe we didn't go over that you kind of want to put out there? Yeah, go man. Go to our two subscribers on, on YouTube. Yeah, one hundred percent. I got a got a few shout outs that I want to make real quick. Um, awesome. First and foremost, a uh, big shout out to 
Orb Studios um, here in Austin, Texas, Matt Noveski, um, World Cloud. I mean, dude, there's great studios all around this town. You can't go wrong with a lot of them. Uh, just our experience there, man, we walked in and it was like instant chemistry. Uh, big shout out to the Machine Shop. Um, Machine, the producer, man, he, uh, he mastered the tracks. Phenomenal mastering. Uh, definitely, if you... Like if you uh, if you get your tracks mastered, then like there's this there's these competing uh, philosophies on how to master a track, like uh, master a track. So it's like the loudness wars kind of thing versus, you know, emphasis on the details, like the little details, and not right. trying to to master it to where those are getting stepped on. I think Machine does a phenomenal job of staying squarely in both of those worlds, where you have this really sick amount of detail but it's so competitive on its tone and it's so competitive on, on its volume that you know actually so with our second record that was a problem we actually went for the detailed approach as opposed to the loudness approach and when you a b that record on pandora it's like night and day whenever you know someone like born of osiris is up there and then you hear our track it's like a noticeable dip in volume so <laughs> big shout out to machine at the machine shop i mean dude's legendary um and then also to uh, Evan Crowley, uh, he actually shot our first two vi videos, uh, directed our first two videos that we have. Uh, big shout out to him. And, uh, you know, big thank you to everybody who supported us so far. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, think, I think that the response that we've gotten has been so overwhelming and so unexpected and so positive that, you know, we really, we've always thanked our fans every single time that they came to a show and they bought a CD, they bought a T-shirt. And we, you know, we, that's the, that's our lifeblood, but you know, we've really been really so, super humbled and um, encouraged by the amount of feedback that we've got on our music, on our new music. So big shout out to everybody who's taking the time to support us. Right on, man. I know here at the loft spot, I know we support you guys. I, I'm, you were super not great to have on the show, Ava. He was a great guest. I think so. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Steven, so much for, for taking time out of your day uh, to come talk with the both of us, talk some music, talk about your band, have some fun and some laughs. So we definitely appreciate that. Uh, don't go anywhere. I want you to stay right there for a little bit. We're about to end the show. So I want to thank everyone who listens to The Lost Spot. Please go subscribe to us on YouTube, Apple, Spotify. Uh, Patreon page is patreon.com forward slash The Lost Spot. Subscribe on YouTube. We really like subscribers. Right, Evan? Let them know we like, we like subscribers. Yes, subscribers are good. <laughs> <laughs> that's right and you can also go to ch uh, check us out at www.theloudspot.net and i guess that is all that i got and buy our merch oh yeah buy our merch buy his merch buy our merch, and buy, merch. and buy merch from weird wolves buy merch <laughs> from everybody all right that's all we got hey steven stay right there peace out rock on much love this is the loud spot outro by nothing short of tragic is this all talk with no action no is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the loud spot with Sebastian? Yes. Does nothing short of tragic have his back again? Yes. Does everything that's good really have to end? Yes. A pin post has a pin show, so to get more episodes, make an order. This is over. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to click the like and share button. Don't forget to go to our YouTube and subscribe. If you want to listen to our audio and pick up some cool merch, go to www.theloudspot.net. Peace out, rock on, much love. I want to say one more thing before we end the live. Thanks, Sharon Wildola, for watching a ton of our episodes and commenting. Now we're done. Be our biggest fan. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>